everyone welcome to this week's vlog and well you can probably see me I'm kind of surrounded by chunky yarns right now fits into this week I've had um, a launch of a chunky collection so I thought I would talk well, I'll kind of introduce the collection but I'd also like to talk a little bit more around chunky yarns and the benefits the drawbacks and when you might want to pull some chunky yarn out. So sometimes um, in some countries it's going to be called uh, bulky yarn. So chunky, bulky is usually going to be pretty much the same thing. Just two words to describe the same thing effectively. But what you're talking about is just a heavier yarn. Usually anything from kind of seven millimeters up, um, you'll have both a chunky and a super chunky which is pretty much as it sounds it's a much heavier weight yarn and it can cover anything like seven eight nine ten eleven once you kind of go into that range it's slightly different category again where i know there's probably a name for it but it's probably like super super bulky or i've got a feeling there is another specific name that i just don't know but at that point you're kind of it's it's hardly yarn anymore it's like knitting with rope but Chunky and super chunky, it's still definitely yarn and it's got a lot of advantages. The first one being obviously that it's faster to knit up. So while it looks like if you take up one of these yarns, there's 150, let me look at it. This is Manos to Uruguay Franca. So it's 100% superwash yarn and there's 150 grams in here. So that's a good bit bigger than normally um, skeins of yarn will be in 50 or in 100 grams but there's 150 but there's only 114 yards there so you'd look at that and go it's like that's not much yardage but if you think about the fact that the yarn is so much thicker that you need much less stitches and much less yarn because each stitch by itself is going to take up a lot more room so that is the big big difference is that you need yardage wise a lot less yarn in terms of weight it's still going to be you know a fairly significant weight of yarn but if you're looking at just purely the actual yardage and how many yards of yarn you use you will use less because the stitches are physically larger so faster is really really good um, the only time that you may kind of run into problems with chunkier yarns is if perhaps if you're a very tight knitter or if you suffer from wrist problems, because the yarn's chunkier, the stitches are physically taken a little bit more to maneuver. So you'll probably actually knit a little bit more slowly with the chunky weight yarn. The fact that there's so much less stitches definitely compensates so that you do still knit the items you make from chunky faster. But I do find that because those stitches are, are bigger and it you just kind of slows you down a little bit, so you're not gonna be knitting at the same kind of speeds that you would with a very lightweight yarn but the number of stitches you need to knit is far less so it definitely weighs each other out this one the franca one is i'm just taking a look at um, the suggested needle size would be nine to ten millimeters so that's fairly significant yarns and this actually almost falls into the super bulky uh, category it doesn't really look like that when it's on the on the yarn here but if you take a look it's fat yarn it's a single ply twisted with kind of a bit of a felt to it but because it's so thick it is very very soft it feels a bit like knitting with cotton wool and it does have a lot more fluff to it you do need to be careful with it it's going to need a little bit more care so knit up into a garment is going to have a little bit more uh, pilling and things like that so you will need a bit more care for small items like gloves and hats it's not really going to be a problem because it doesn't it's so small and you're knitting it more tightly generally speaking with yarn if you want to prevent pilling and you've got a soft yarn knitting your stitches a little bit tighter helps because it just means that there's a bit more cohesion and they're going to rub against each other just a little bit less so just remember that tighter knitting can help with pilling it's not going to remove it if you've got a super super soft yarn but it can definitely help and the same reason for i've got the other yarn i've got here is a it is more of a chunky yarn but this one is applied yarn which means that there's several strands that have been twisted together and that is it's not going to have that super cotton wool feel that you get from the franca because of the fact that it's just a single ply but by virtue of it being twisted together 
it gives it a little bit more cohesiveness, a bit more durability, and just the structure of the yarn does kind of what I was talking about with um, when you knit it tightly is that if you've got less movement against things, it just, it makes it a bit more cohesive. Less rubbing means you're going to get a little less pilling. So with the soft chunky, even though it's 100% merino, it is, it's soft. It's definitely like, that's what I'm wearing now. It's definitely next to the skin soft, but it's not going to be quite in the same category as the Franca but it is going to be a little bit more durable. You'll get less pilling and things like that with it. So it's, it depends wow, well, what you want. Do you want to make sure that it is absolutely the softest thing you can possibly touch? Go for Franca. If you want to have it soft and comfortable to wear, but not worry so much about wearability and things like that, then the chunky is going to be what you want. So this one is milled in Donegal and they've got Anyone who's heard me talk about Donegal yarns before, you'll know that I spend a lot of time talking about the flex. So unlike some Donegals, um, their Donegal effect, and what they mean by that is there'll be a strand of usually a nylon or some kind of a filament, and then the little nubs or the flex of color will be attached to that, and then that's spun in with it. So that's kind of a way for mills to create an effect without having to go through the, the actual Donegal process. In Donegal yarns, what they actually do is they will, when they're picking, when they're creating the yarn colors, they'll take all the, all of the fleeces are initially dyed. So they'll take little bits, each of the fleece, and then mix them together to create the main color. But at the same time, they'll have what they have little neps here going through and they'll design the color of those. And those are little felted sections of wool that when it's spun in with the rest of the yarn, it keeps a cohesiveness and it actually holds on to its its color and it doesn't get blended in so it means that you will have these different flecks running through this one here is the um it's the darker green or dar darker green darker blue i'm colorblind now apparently um and this has got very subtle flecks most of them are white and very subtle this pink one here it's got a lot more going on. There's some white, there's little bits of a darker pink, there's bits of green, there's bits of purple. So there's, again, there, it's not really aggressive, but it's, there is definitely more bits going on. Um, and one of the fleckier ones would be the red, which is also what the cardigan is made of here, because this one has got flecks of blue, flecks of green, uh, flecks of kind of an orangey color. So the flecks are a lot more dominant in this one. And that's all done in the actual blending process. So it is still 100% wool yarn. It's in fact, it's actually, it makes it a very, very environmentally friendly way of creating yarn because the fleeces that they create those from, that comes from the waste products. So when they go through the carding and the spinning process, it creates yarn waste. So those are taken, re-dyed and actually felted and they are what's created the neps. So it means that there is much, much less waste. All of the waste is taken out and it's reused in other ways. What I mean, what I find particularly interesting about it is it was done to recreate um, a homespun effect because when you're dyeing yarn at home and particularly traditionally, you're not going to waste anything. So there's going to be little bits of colors here and there. And as it's spun, you'd always have bits of flex and different colors running through. And because people liked that effect, even though it was created completely accidentally uh, from a traditional point of view, in the yarns, it was put in on, um, on purpose. It was a deliberate creation to try and recreate that homespun effect. So that's how the, the little color neps came about in the yarns. But I do think that it adds like a lot more interest, a bit of depth and quite a uniqueness to the Donegal yarns. So now that I've told you all about chunky yarns and looked at the chunky yarns we have in stock, next thing we want to look at is what I've done in the chunky collection. So the reason I put it together is I wanted ones that were accessible and had um, um, for, for as large a range of knitters as possible. So if you're a more uh, advanced knitter and you want something really quick and comfy and cozy that you can wear day in, day out, then the sweaters that I've designed for this, or the cardigans I should say, are going to be just perfect. You can just grab the pattern and go with the, um, with the actual pattern. However, because sometimes 
um, knitters, even very experienced knitters, may stick with small items or with shawls or scarves and things like that because the process of knitting a sweater is very intimidating, trying to figure out gauge and sizing and just the cost of the actual products going into it, the amount of yarn going into it. And if you don't feel very secure in being able to knit it, it's a really intimidating process. So the ones in the chunky yarn kind of combined with the workshops would be a very, very good way of working yourself into knitting a garment because it'll go through kind of all of the thoughts that you have to, all of the things you need to do, your swatching, your sizing, and then just showing on the needles how you move from one stage to another. Now, both of these have got workshops. Um, this one, the Barack, is probably a little bit more approachable if you're a very new knitter. If you'd like to, if you've got like a little bit of knitting under your belt, and you can handle like a variety of different stitch patterns, then this one, the Sorn, may be the one for you. If you want to challenge yourself and you're a more experienced knitter, but want to stick with something smaller, then the Basinite mitts would be a good one for you. These are an older pattern that was done, I designed, it was probably 10 years ago. There was a hat and a mitt set, and there is a ton of techniques in these little patterns. And I've, I really wanted to actually take a workshop so that I could use it to, on a small scale, teach people how to step through a lot of different types of techniques. So if you are perhaps maybe a more experienced knitter or you haven't tried the techniques in these, then the workshop is probably going to be really helpful. So I may, maybe I'll start with these first of all. So the basinite ones are knit in Franca. So this is the super chunky yarn here. Um, very, very thick um, and if you can see there tends to be, some of them are speckled, some of them have got like quite a bit of colour variation. This was the blush colour and it's got a little bit of variation but it's not too much. Because you're working it from side to side, it's actually a great way of showcasing um, a yarn with a lot of contrast because you just, you get to see all of them kind of move across the side of the hand as you work around. So it will look, even if you go for a more um, sharply contrast one, I think it's gonna look really interesting. The way it starts is you begin with the provisional cast on from side to side here, because the whole thing is worked from side to side. The cuff uses a slip stitch pattern. So that just means that some of the stitches as you pass them are slipped and they're slipped with the yarn towards the public side of the work or the front of the work and it moves across as you go and so what that does is it creates this herringbone pattern. Now, if you've done slip stitch patterns before you'll know it's very compact, draws the knitting in and that's why I put it for the cuff because when you draw knitting in around a cuff it's going to give you a nice snug fit. So even though this is the same number of stitches as this you can see this is narrower which is exactly what you want because it's a cuff right? And then this section here is your garter stitch. At the top and the bottom, we have our integrated I-cord. So you're just doing the I-cord as you're working your way around. So it gives a nice, clean, tidy finish on both sides. So it starts here and you work all the way over to this point here. And then you can see there's a thumb. So the way the thumb is worked, here, I'll put it on so you can see it. Uh, the way the thumb is worked is you're just gonna work on these stitches. And we just used a section of short rows German short rows and garter stitch back and forth to just have the finger working out like this. You could, if you need to make it a little bit bigger or if you wanted to, um, yeah, just make it longer or something like that, you can just vary how this works. Then when you're done, you rejoin those and you continue all the way around to the second half of the mitt. So then you can see that there isn't any obvious seam here and that's because we grafted all of these together because you had the provisional cast on at the start so you graph the start with the end and you join it all up together. And then the cuff, the inside of the cuff, you did bind off those stitches. And then on the other side, you're going to go ahead and just knit a little bit more and create a flap. Now, I didn't actually put any real buttonholes here because I just wanted to put this in order to give you a bit more flexibility to fit your mitt. So it's folded over. You can try it on your hand and you just sew it down with the buttons to match into the, uh, to the size of your wrist. So it, um, that's how you do one of them. The second one I've also done, the workshop shows both because 
it's the same but different because it's coming from the other direction so your herringbone is on the other side things are happening kind of on the wrong side versus the right side so it's like it's like trying to knit it backwards so it, it's why the workshop does cover both because it can get it can get a little bit confusing but it does mean there's loads of really good techniques in these little ones you've got provisional cast on you've grafting slip stitch um, herringbone pattern and some German short rows as well as eye cord edging so there's loads of stuff and you get to see me knit through the whole thing in the actual workshop itself so that is the basinite myths there so that's the starting one the, the, the you know the the smallest pattern but probably with the most techniques in a really compact <laughs> in a compact little uh, little piece um, next one is the sorn this is mine here i'll turn around so you can see the back it's got a ribbing down the back and it's top down and it is my favorite is the funnel neck up around here the way this is worked and both of them actually is the top down raglan if anyone has done raglan with me they'll know that like for this one because i kind of view it as a slightly more advanced version of that i have made a little bit more additions to the raglan shaping so when you come down initially i've got a little bit of short rows at the back to raise up the back of the neck then once that's done you come into raglan and then you're kind of moving through ones where you space the raglan spacing out a little and another, and then you move down and you stop the armhole shaping and you're doing just the body the reason i do that is because when you're doing top down knitting our bust does not increase at the same rate as our sleeves standard raglan shaping you're going to have eight increases every right side round if you do that particularly as you move up to larger sizes as opposed to the really small sizes you're going to end up with sleeves that are far too big by the time you reach the bust size you want so the way you can counteract that is by slowing down the rate of the sleeve increase so that you still get the armhole depth you want the bust size you want and the sleeves don't get too big so that's why it may look a little bit more complicated than other raglan shaping it's to ensure that every part fits a little bit better so in the workshop i do talk through those i lay out what it looks like on the table as you're working and explaining where everything is now in terms of stitch pattern the front of it here is reverse stockinet stitch which means it's purl on the right side knit on the wrong side on the back of it here it's reverse stockinet stitch on each side with some ribbing in the middle and then just to throw a little bit of fun in i've gone and done the sleeves and stockinet stitch so kind of have to keep track of the fact that this is knit on the right side purl on the wrong and this one is purl on the right and knit on the wrong and then you've got garter edging along here so there's a few different stitch patterns going on it is obviously written out but you do have to you have to focus on it as you work through and pay attention to where you're at it's knit from the top down and then you've got nice little i-cord edging on the bottom and it finishes off like i'll also just kind of turn the corners with the i-cord edging and i even did some grafting at the start to the end so it's totally seamless neck is finished by picking it up and with eye cord edging when you're picking it up going in opposite direction it wants to curl the other way so you have to kind of slightly adjust the way the eye cord is worked when you do the neck so if you're doing the neck afterwards and you're wondering what's going on and why it's changed it is in order to create a seamless eye cord going up here because of the fact that we're now doing it from the bottom up rather than from the top down so it that was one I, I redid a couple of times that I did it the first time the other way and I'm looking and I'm like that doesn't look quite right so I let it sit in you know the timeout corner for a few weeks and I came back and said all right I'm just going to rip that out and redo it and I was much much happier once I redid it because it made sense so it is worthwhile if something doesn't look quite right to you to just leave it sit for a little bit so you can distance yourself from it and then when you come back you're much more able to tackle and redo it i think that's my personal experience but i know talking to other people that that's fairly common i think so that's the sorn cardigan and the last one i want to introduce you to is the brack cardigan and this one was designed i've got here there's two versions of this last year i did it in a super chunky so this isn't the franca and it was designed as a first cardigan so it's kept very straightforward there's no um, short row shaping there's no variation on the actual the rate of increases 
I kept it as simple as possible. Um, now, what it may mean is the upper arms may be a little bit bigger, but I think with the style, it actually still works even with that. So you can get away with it. But if you are new to cardigans or new to sweater knitting, I, you know, you're best off keeping the parts nice and simple so that you don't have to worry too much about whether, you know, what stage you're at and things like that. Or alternatively, if you're an experienced knitter and you just want to whip out a cardigan the weekend, then this is the one for you. It just flies off the needles. Um, and because it's knit in a looser gauge, it's actually lighter than you expect it to be. So it's knit quite loosely um, because I think with, with chunky, it means that it's just going to be a little bit lighter. So the way it's done is it's raglan top down around here. And you can probably see here, there is yarn over increase. So you've got a central knit stitch and then there's a yarn over each side. So the actual increases, the line is quite decorative by itself. The front has got V-line shaping. It's just increasing coming out here till it reaches the middle. And then once you reach the underarm, separate the sleeves, the body is worked straight from that point down. And then you finish off with a little bit of just a little lace effect where there's a double decrease and increases on each side. That is optional. There's also one where you can just keep it straight down with nothing else going on. So both of those options are in the pattern. And when you buy the BRAC pattern, you get two patterns. You get the super chunky version and the chunky version. I'll put this one down here. And so that one was in Franca. This one is in Soft Donegal. It's a different gauge, obviously, because it's a smaller needle, smaller, uh, smaller gauge than the super chunky. Uh, but all the details are the same. You've got your double yarn over. The sizings are kept more or less the same. There's a tiny bit of variation just by virtue that you can't always translate one gauge to another and expect each size brackets to be exactly the same. But full sets of sizing are given. And this one also has that little detail shown at the bottom here. And it closes just with one little button here. Oh, and yes, of course, the edge of this, it's garter stitch. So you pick up the stitches, work from side to side, and you just work that one buttonhole. Um, you can actually, because you can try it on as you're working, it's quite good because you want to make sure that the position of that button is exactly where you want it to be. So by putting it on, you know, trying it on as you're going, so when you get to go fast enough, you can just put a safety pin where you want it to go to make sure it's exactly in the right spot. But I, I kind of feel like this is going to be my go-to cold winter evening dressing up outfit. It just feels like a really good one to put over a dress extra cozy but still looks a little bit elegant whereas this one is my i'm cold in the evening i'm sitting in front of the fire or i need to go out on the beach it's just yeah this is the cozy that's the little bit elegant but both really fast to get off the needles with the gauge so i hope you enjoyed reading a little bit reading a little bit more <laughs> hearing a little bit more about this um, if you want some other ideas for um, for different videos to watch, just look down there. It's a couple of links to get you started. Um, and thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can make sure that you're the first to hear when the next video goes live.